Gerald Salente would say that when people have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you what that brings us to. I'm telling you right now, it's not pretty. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We don't have to be backed into a corner and simply give up. When we get to this stage and we start to recognize what we see here, there are actions that we can take. But I'm going to show you today not only... Uh, what's coming and what they're planning for us this you know everything's actually already underway it's already being built but of course things that you can do as an individual we'll talk about that at the end you know what's interesting is there's always this media that's out there in order to inform us you know you might get the weather you might get statistics that they put out you you can look at you know sports scores that happen from the, the night before that's coming out in the media the things you watch but there's also some things that are being put out there intentionally just to put you fast asleep now you might not want to be falling asleep you might actually just want to know what's going on but the vast majority of that information is uh not going to inform you but i'm going to show you something here i'm an economist don't worry be happy yeah, that's right. Um, this is from your favorite newspaper, the New York Times. Um, basically, what they said was, you don't have to worry. We've been through this before. Prices, yes, they've gone up, but don't worry. Your salary has gone up too. Oh, you're richer because you're 401k. All of that nonsense. All of that nonsense. In this article, uh, the New York Times. Why don't we instead, instead of looking at garbage, why don't we look at something real? Jamie Demon, of all people, issues an economic warning. So we have two opposing sort of pieces of information, right? Look here. I'd rather just get everything at Walmart. Dollar Tree shoppers upset with price hikes. So I watch this little clip here, and basically what they say is that Dollar Tree has started to increase the price of stuff, and some items at Dollar Tree go up to now seven, seven US dollars. Okay, where I am, we got Monopoly money. That would be like over ten dollars of stuff now. Dollar Tree is not what it was before. Like there are dollar stores that have things for a dollar and the things that you're going to buy for that $7, you know, that's something that it's not something that was $1 last year. Of course, they're selling more things. They have food items. They got like all kinds of stuff there. So we have to take that with a grain of salt, of course. But the point is they've been increasing the price of everything. There's no question about that. Dollar Tree, the fastest growing segment, what they said here of their customers, is those making $125,000 a year. So those people are choosing to go to the dollar store. Now, as I said, they're selling more stuff than they did before. They're kind of becoming the variety store. Um, but I think it's really important to address what's happening here. The currency the currency the currency is being devalued but at the same time what's happening here with all businesses is that they are pushing as much as they can and they're trying to find that ceiling i know this myself in my business where amazon is put in the squeeze i didn't increase prices for something like two more than two years as amazon's pushing increasing those fees but of course Eventually, you got to start to dial that up a little bit too because your margins keep thinning out. Okay, if they're doing that, well, I got to respond. That's what some of these businesses are doing, right? I realize as a small business, not a big business, what's going on. Those that are really controlling things are putting the squeeze on everybody else. Trying to squeeze you out of business in a sense. The rich are getting second passports, citing risk of instability. So those with money are looking at the scenario. They're saying prospects are not good. I, at the very least, want a plan B. You see what's happening? If they have money, they're saying, you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm getting out of here. 
or I'm going to get a second passport. I want something that's, you know, if the stuff hits the fan, I've got a place to go. And some are actually doing plan B's and plan C's and so on. What we have here is part of flag theory. Flag theory is actually quite interesting, where if you have the money, if you have the ability to do so, you would be able to plant flags in different places. So what does that mean? You are a resident of one place. You have your corporation in another place. You have a bank account in another place. And all of these things work seamlessly with each other, but they're all in different places, different flags everywhere, so that you have the maximum amount of diversification possible. It's not that expensive, uh, but certainly the average person not going to be able to do it and wouldn't be able to take advantage of it anyway if your job is where you are you you know your family's there like everything is just like right there locally where you are flag theory you know it's a small thing uh but for some people they're simply just getting out they're saying i've had enough look one other example why californians are fleeing this once golden state they talk about the prices they talk about all, all the different issues but I think it's important to note that there's different things happening. So there's people leaving the expensive parts. I did a video recently actually showing a map where it, it uh, different colors where people move in to and from. And I thought it was amazing to see that kind of thing because, um, you know, you don't get those maps to appear too often, but it was something telling. And it explained how areas that are too expensive well, what happens? People can't afford it. They leave. And when they do that, you're taking tax money with you. And so the government gets put further into debt while we have these high interest rates. Of course, that's going to squish people even further. Oh, no. This year, we can't afford to fix the roads. Oh, no, no, no. We can't afford this particular program we used to run. You see what happens here? It is a big issue. The fried chicken is in New York. The cashier is in the Philippines. So, uh, yeah, I read through this. And basically what's happening is outsourcing. So these people uh, on that screen, if you could see that there, um, the cashier is, makes $3 an hour. $3 an hour. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and what happens is uh, these people, they come up on the screen, they say, hey, I'd like to help you here, you know, and they kind of guide you through instead of interacting with just a screen. I don't know why, why does it even matter? Like why I even have the human there? It seems kind of like why I bother at this point. Um, but more and more people, particularly the young people, are becoming more comfortable with interacting with the technology and less comfortable interacting with us silly humans. And so what are they going to do? They're going to be going to the places that they just, oh, hey, you know what? I could just go to these places, touch two buttons, and out, out my food comes. That's the future, okay? I, I think the high-end, the very, very high-end upscale Restaurants won't do that, of course, but everything that's like casual and, and all the way to, down to fast food is going to go this route. I really believe that. That's how they cut costs. Oh, you want to make New York increases, let's say, the minimum wage. Let's say it becomes 20 bucks an hour. Okay, no problem. We just uh, get rid of everybody and then we implement some sort of offshoring or robots or flipping the robot and so on. Zimbabwe, I covered this for, I mean, I've been doing it since the beginning, meet Zig, Zimbabwe's latest shot at a stable currency. Yes, that's right. They are going at it once again. There you can see the currency. Oh, I'm sure that cutting zeros off the currency is the best way to accomplish your issues, uh, getting them handled or not. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, what do you think the value of the Zig will be in the near future? One year from now, what do you think it's going to be? Would you say half its value? Would you say one-tenth of value? You, you, you got policy problems. You need to fix them, and that hurts. If that meant pain, if I could tell you you had to experience pain for the next year, for the next two years, but after that, it's rocket growth. Wouldn't it be worth it? 
wouldn't it be worth it to just say, look, it's going to suck for a year or two. But then after that, it's going to be real good. We're going to get, you know, real job growth. We're going to get all these different things, businesses, entrepreneurship, things will grow. Things will get better. Or we can just take the risk and keep applying more debt and keep money printing, debasing the currency, devaluing the currency. You tell me. And what happens here? Of course, people push to the edge. They do whatever it is they can. Cash strapped Argentines queue for eyeball scans. You remember this thing? Well, in Argentina, people are saying, I'll do whatever the heck I can because my currency is worthless. And so I'll take some of this stuff. I'll convert it. They'll probably just take it and instantly convert it to either Bitcoin or their own cash or whatever. And so that's going on right now. You see it? You see people push to the edge, do whatever they have to do. And now, for those who stayed until this point, get to learn exactly what this all entails. IMFs, Tobias Adrian on a multilateral solution to the world's cross-border payment woes. What is he talking about? He is talking about CBDCs. He's talking about everything that's been happening. They are looking at this right now being the solution to the problem. A CBDC, central bank digital currency, that is not only you have one for the ECB, you got one for the Fed, you got, no, no, no. We are talking about a system that they're saying the ledger, like the blockchain, right? they would all be interconnected. All central banks have to accept a certain unified ledger system. So of course, they could talk to each other, they could read each other. And there's going to be one group that's at the center of that. Maybe it's the IMF. The biz is already doing that today, Bank for International Settlements. They're doing so. These tests are happening. The beta test is happening. And they are going to push everybody into the CBDC. And that means, imagine you have a problem with your current system. Just think about where we are headed. The system is so beyond, it's beyond anything where you can ever, you know, oh, I'll just get around it. Oh, I won't use it. I won't accept it. People are pushed to the edge and they will accept anything because they have to. They're saying, well, I'll take it. You can see the offshoring. You could see the robots. You can see the AI. You could look at the economy, the inflation and the prices of everything one by one by one. And we get to the supposed solution, Hegelian dialectic, problem reaction solution, CBDC, not just a central bank digital currency, because that in itself wouldn't mean much. But one that is connected with all the others in order to eliminate all, all that last, last shred of sovereignty that you may have had, that last little bit of control, you remember, in the United States, Congress, at least they grill the Fed every so often. What are you doing? Why did you do that? What's going to happen with this? Why are you doing this? There will be none of that anymore. It won't even matter because the overlords above them, they make the decisions. So the Fed would just sit back and say, it wasn't us. It's them. They told us. Or we had to because, you know, multilateral and because of international and because of national and because of this and that, they make excuses and it's over. That's the way it goes. What can you do as an individual? Number one, well, here's the thing. you got to understand the pillars of prosperity. So you can type into a search, pillars of prosperity, the money GPS. That video breaks it down. Number one, increase income. Number two, self-sufficiency. These two things are important. You could focus more on one than the other, but I would look at both. You got to understand what you can do, what your limitations are, of course, where you live and things, but you've got to understand the pillars of prosperity. Look at the section 
how to and solutions i've got a playlist and of course as always live i cover it every single week with my live crew i hope you join links in the description there i want to see you back here tomorrow all right take care see you